Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here. The lab coat is on back order, and it's time for episode number two of the Pokemon Blue playthrough. In the last episode, not a lot happened because it was just our starting episode. We did pick up our starter Pokemon from Professor Oak, being Shelbert the Squirtle. So a brief team recap, if you can call it that, more of a Shelbert recap. You see he's got attack of 14, defense 15, speed 13, and special 12. And as I mentioned in the last episode, in Generation 1, special was not split into attack and defense. It was all just one stat. And his moveset is just the basic tackle and tail look for starters. I'm not sure when he learns bubble, but that is the next move we're going to get. I think it might be like maybe level 10. We'll have to see. He's got he needs two experience points to get to level 8. So if we're lucky, we'll get bubble at level 8. Now, in the last episode, we did take on our rival for the first time, and it was an epic battle for the ages, of course. Tackles left and right. And we did manage to get up here to Viridian City. We picked up the Oaks parcel from the Pokemon Mart, delivered it to Professor Oak back in Pallet Town, got the Pokedex, learned how to catch Pokemon from this old man up here who doesn't even follow his own instructions. He catches a Weedle at full HP and then tells us to weaken Pokemon. But I'm going to follow in his footsteps. I'm going to start catching some Pokemon for the team. And obviously you don't need to weaken them. You can just throw a Pokeball. So we're going to jump right into Route 1, the first route we came to. And let's see what we can catch for the team. So first we encounter a Rattata. Level 4. Not a bad addition to the team. So obviously we just go to our items and choose Pokeball and launch it out. And we now have Rattata added to the team. What the heck? They can break out of the Pokeball? The old man never taught me this. Okay, so obviously we do need to weaken it. I'm gonna go for a Tackle. We can take one more of those. Even a Critical I don't think will take it out. And down to the yellow. So we should be able to catch this pretty easy now. Pokeball number two. One, two, and three. Ping. Raditzo is caught. So we now have the second member of the team. New Pokedex data. Rattata, the rat Pokemon, bites anything when it attacks. Small and very quick, it is a common sight in many places. It sounds like a really rare, unique Pokemon. So yes, I'm going to nickname it. And for anyone that follows the Wi-Fi battles, you'll know I use Eradicate by the name of Squeak. And this is when Squeak was added to the team. So let's take a quick look at him. So as I said, level 4. He's got some decent attack and speed for level 4 Pokemon. Tackle and Tail Up is the moveset. So since he is weak, I'm just going to leave him in reserve for now while we catch the second member of our Kanto team. And what do we find in the next patch of grass? We find a Pidgey, and that's what I was looking for. Of course, there is only Rattata and Pidgey on Route 1, so your options are limited for what you want to start with. So I'm going to go for the tackle. I'm not going to waste another Pokeball, thanks to the teaching of the old man. Now, something I didn't mention last time, I think I did mention that Gust was a normal move instead of flying. And as I throw a Pokeball, I'll explain this. It, uh, it's normal in this game, it's not flying, and in this generation, first of all, we caught Pidgey. In this generation, moves are special or physical based on what their type is. There isn't a physical special split between types either. So first of all, Pidgey is the tiny bird Pokemon, a common sight in forest and woods. It flaps its wings at ground level to kick up blinding sand. And I'm going to nickname this Pokemon, this being the third member of the team, Good old Chirp. So right away we're going to go up and heal up these two Pokemon. First, I'm going to take a quick look at Chirp, though. Level 3. Pretty average stats, looks like. Just knows Gust for the time being. They do learn Sand Attack pretty quick, though. I think, actually, one more level up and Chirp will have Sand Attack. So we're going to go heal up. And we're going to head back down to Route 1 to do a little bit more training to try to get those two new Pokemon up to speed. So as I was saying, the special or physical aspect of a move isn't based on its own you know, like a subset sort of a thing. It is like all water moves, for example, are special based. All electric moves are special. All normal moves are physical. So Gust is technically a physical type move in this generation. So Chirp needs the most training right now. I'm going to switch him up to the front. If it lets me switch him up to the front. There we go. Thank you, Chirp. So hopping into the grass. It's going to be pretty fun doing this playthrough because there's some type differences that I don't even recall. Like, I do think I recall Bug and Poison being super effective against each other. And from what I remember, now this is a level 3 Rattata. I'm going to just go for Gust, see what we can do. But if I recall, Fire did not resist Ice in the first generation because I believe I would see Ice attacks be super effective against Charizard. 
So, we're gonna go to Shelbert, actually. I can send Squeak in, but he's not gonna take that much damage from this. He's only one level higher. Shelbert has the defenses to take down this Rattata, and the attack to bring it down also. One- ooh, that was a critical, okay, nice. Oh no, our defense has just fallen. So, it's gonna be fun going through. Something that you might have noticed on the stat screens as I looked at the Pokémon, there are two noteworthy things to mention. One, there are no abilities. That's right, Shelbert normally would have Torrent in the future games, which will boost his water moves. And he learned Bubble at level 8, I was very lucky with that. Okay, we have a Stab move now. Yes, Stab was still a thing back in this generation. But there are no abilities, and no held items either. That was in Generation 2 they introduced that, and abilities came in in Generation 3. So, it's going to be cool to see how this plays through. This is a much more simplistic game than you might be used to if you started recently in the world of Pokémon. Say, like, Generation 4 and onward. Because things are pretty well set in stone at that point. So we go for the nice bubble. It's not very powerful, but it is, like I said, stab. And as you saw, has the chance to lower speed. So I'm going to do a little bit of training. I'm going to try to get the Pokémon up to at least level 5 before stepping forward in the rest of the adventure. So, bear with me. I'm going to do some on-screen grinding for starters as I continue to talk a little bit about the game. But in the future, when I have like a bigger collection of Pokémon I need to level up, I'll probably start doing some grinding montages. So, I think a level 2 Pidgey, our level 4 Rattata can handle. So Squeak's going to come in. Let's see how wrong I was. Oh, he's not that bad. I'm going to Tail Whip first of all. Lower the Pidgey's defense so the tackles are going to hit a little harder. So, as I mentioned last time, this is why... Pidgey no longer starts with Gust in Generation 2, it starts with Tackle, because they didn't want to have a super effective flying move if you choose Chikorita for your starter. So look at that, Squeak takes down his first Pokémon. Neither of them level up, okay. This is going to take a little bit of a while. But Viridian City, you might have noticed there is a Pokémon Gym, but of course it is locked and we can't get in there. I wonder who could be the Gym Leader of that Gym, and when we're going to get in there. So right away, we're going to go right back to Shelbert. Squeak took some damage in that last one. And I think a couple of bubbles should bring down the Rattata. And on the last episode's comments, I was talking with somebody who was saying how they, they felt Bulbasaur was one of the best starters because it can learn a decent uh, Sunny Day Solar Beam combo. But what's interesting with Generation 1, again, limitation-wise, there are no weather setting aspects here. There's no... Rain dance, there's no sunny day, nothing like that. So it wasn't until Generation 2 that the weather came into play. Also, the day and night system as well. We have that, of course, now in the games, but Generation 1, there wasn't anything like that. So there's a lot of different aspects to this first generation than we're used to right now. But a nice basic gust attack, just gonna keep using up the bubbles. I might trade until we run out of all of our bubbles, and I'll move on to something a little bit more interesting. Or until Shelbert goes down to the red, then we'll heal, and we're going to step forward into the map, or into the adventure, the map, I meant to say. So one more bubble should bring this Pidgey down. Chirp should level up from this, I think. There we go, level 4 Pidgey. Does he learn Sand Attack yet? Nope, I think level 5 he gets it. So just a few more matches to train up here. Don't worry, eventually we're going get, to get, we're gonna get to start seeing some new Pokémon. Shelbert, jump on in, go for your bubbles, take down this Rattata. Right, yeah, we're getting pretty low. I think we'll just finish up this last match here, then we'll move forward onto the next route. Oh, we slowed it down, not that we didn't have speed already. Now, a critical might knock out Shelbert, but I think we're okay. We're not going to get critical hit. There's no chance. Sweet. And the torrent just boosted... Wait, no. No abilities. It'd be nice, though, of course, this regular bubble would have done the trick anyway. So we're going to go back to the center and heal up. And I'm going to take you on a little bit of a tour before advancing the story. So first up, get all of our Pokémon back to full health. Nice and free. No charge at all. Could you imagine if they did charge in the Pokémon centers? Like, you'd probably run out of money pretty fast just grinding your Pokémon. So we're going to put Squeak at the front now, since he was first caught on the team. He's going to gain the next level before Chirp does. No offense to Chirp, of course. So out this way from Viridian City, if you go west, you'll see you come to another route. Now this man is stuck behind a tree we cannot access just yet, but he gives you something later in the game, which we'll come back to pick up at some point. So we're heading into route number... 
24, I believe it is? 22, actually. Okay. Oh yeah, 24 is near the top of the map. So there's some more grass here, and there's some more Pokemon you can encounter. As you'll see here, we have a Nidoran female. Now, if you might notice on the Pokemon's names, there is no gender option, or gender indicator. That means there were no genders in the first generation, except for the Nidoran, like the male and female. It's quite interesting that they didn't use, or they waited until Generation 2 to put the... How do we miss the tackle? But yeah, they waited until Generation 2 to actually put in the male-female aspect. So I'm just going to go for a quick knockout here. The reason I came to this route is I'm going to show you there is something you can activate right now, which I'm not going to do, because in my original playthrough, I didn't know this particular event was here, so I didn't actually uh, partake in it. But if you leave this grass and come up here, if you walk to the west even further, you have a rival battle. Now, I'm not going to do it at this point at least, because he has like a level 8 Pidgey, I think, and a level 9 starter. I am not prepared for that. I'm going to move on with the adventure, continuing on north from Viridian City. It's a pretty powerful match. I think it's because you can come back at... Uh, I'm not sure when the event kind of goes away, but you can come back at some point and battle him when you have like a fully charged up team of stronger Pokemon. Trainer tips. Catch Pokemon and expand your collection. The more you have, the easier it is to fight. Obviously, that's just what I was saying. When you have a more beefed up collection of Pokemon, you have a stand a better chance. So we're on Route 2 from Viridian City to Pewter City. Pewter City sounds pretty awesome. I want to get there and check out what's going on. So here on Route 2, you might encounter some new Pokemon. We're just going to take a quick walk through the grass and see what shows up. You might see some familiar faces, of course. Like another Pidgey. At level 5. This is definitely a Shelbert job. So I'm going to go for a number of bubbles against this. Now, this Pidgey should have Sand Attack. There it is. Accuracy will drop a stage, but hopefully we can still land the bubble. Nope. Alright, and Gust. A little more powerful since it's a higher level. Still only 3 HP, though. And with one Sand Attack, we missed two bubbles in a row. Don't you love losing the accuracy? That's three bubbles in a row. Alright, and finally we land one, the fourth bubble, and it's going to take two more to get the knockout. We're probably going to have to go back and heal right away. But there should at least be some decent experience. Okay, another sand attack. Nope, missed that bubble. This Pidgey might destroy the team. So as I said in the first episode, this is not a Nuzlocke. If we do lose a Pokemon, it's unfortunate, but we can just go heal. I'm considering, once we have a decent team, if a Pokemon does faint, maybe not healing them or reviving them until after the next gym battle that we get into. Think of it like uh, in Dragon Ball Z, let's say we have to collect the Dragon Balls by beating the gym leader or something. But we'll see. If it gets a little too difficult, I'm probably going to ignore that possibility. So we're going to start doing some teamwork. We're going to Tail Whip with Squeak. We're going to survive this hit for sure. Nope. Alright, so we're going to go into Chirp. And we're just going to weaken it with some Gust Attacks, first of all. It's going to weaken us with some Gust Attacks, also. Two more of those will bring Chirp down, unfortunately. But we can get probably under... We can get it into the yellow, and Shelver can finish it up. Although, if we're lucky... No, Chirp's not going to get the knockout, but we'll go for another Gust. And do we land it? We don't, so Shelver is coming in. Come on, Pidgey, just faint. We just need the experience. So the Sand Attack misses. It's weird that I believe Sand Attack has full accuracy, but wild Pokémon seem to have a greater chance of missing their moves. Like You've probably seen by now a number of times the Growl attack they use fails, yet Growl is supposed to be fully accurate. So a little bit of experience. We're going to go heal up quickly. And there's not too much to see on Route 2. There's a lot of trees we can cut down on the side of the road, as you can see. Of course, we do not yet have Cut. We'll look at that until a little bit later into the game. So we're going to heal up, and I think we've explored route number two about as far as we can. We're going to delve forward into the adventure. So one more quick heal up. Still only at three Pokemon. That's okay. It's good for starters. Now, when I play through a Pokemon game, I don't like to basically just collect everything as I go. I like to build a team of six, at, you know, eventually as I get through the, uh, the game, and focus on just using them 
to advance through the game. Then maybe in post-game I can go back and start catching Pokémon. So, for the time being, I'm not going to catch anything on Route 2, even if there is something new. Do I dare walk through and see if there's anything? Why not? Nope, we make it through unscathed. There is an item over there. It's just taunting you and teasing you, but you cannot yet get at it. So this little rest area, I'm going to check it in here. Are you going to Viridian Forest? Be careful, it's a natural maze. I've been through Generation 1 so many times, I can find my way through. Radita may be small, but its bite is wicked. Have you seen Raticate Break? That is insane. Did you get one? Yes, I do have a Radita, thank you. His name is Squeak. He got knocked out by a Pidgey. I came here with some friends. They're out for Pokemon fights. Oh, so he's saying there are some trainers in this forest. Trainer tips. Weaken Pokemon before attempting capture. Now see, the old man didn't even read this sign. When healthy, they may escape. As we have obviously seen. So there's a number of items in the forest we can pick up. Not in here, though. And I think there's one up here through this grass. Yep. We find a Pokeball. Sweet, that's going to replace the one that we lost trying to capture full HP Squeak. We're going to avoid the grass for the time being. I'm just going to try to root around look for some items. Or a sign. For poison, use Antidote. Get it at Pokemon Marts. We have a number of those already, so we're good for a bit. And what's this sign say? Trainer tips? If you want to avoid battles, stay away from grassy areas. Don't you love how they put the sign within a grassy area that you have to walk into in order to read that? That is very, very clever. I ran out of Pokeballs to catch Pokemon with. You should carry extras. It's a very good piece of advice. I always try to make sure I have at least 50 Pokeballs in my bag in all the games. And here we have our first trainer. Hey, you have Pokemon. Come on, let's battle him. This guy sounds vicious. So let's see what this bug catcher happens to bring in. He has two Pokemon. Starting off with a Weedle. We've already seen this. It's a level 6. Alright, Squeak, let's give it a try. We're going to Tail Whip it. Now, these have Poison Sting and String Shot. String Shot will lower the speed. Poison Sting is a weak move, but it has a chance to cause poison. And we're not poisoned. That's good, so we're going to tackle off. Two more tackles, and Squeak can actually take this himself. We do have an antidote to cure the poison if we do get poisoned. And I think Squeak just won his first match all by himself against a Pokemon that's 50% higher level than he is. Not bad. That's gotta be a level. Yep, level 5, Squeak. And next Pokemon is Caterpie. This thing looks cool. So this only has String Shot and Tackle instead, so it can't even poison us, which is fortunate. Squeak shouldn't have a hard time against this. Alright, so we're losing some more speed. Doesn't really matter, it already outspeeds us anyway. I love when random trainers and wild Pokemon will spam the moves that don't do anything, because you know they already outspeed. Why would you bother string shotting? But hey, free turn for tackle for us. Alright, so Squeak is down to 6 HP, but he won both fights on his own. Is that another level? It is. I wasn't sure if it would be or not. It's only a little Caterpie. So speed is at 14 now. No! Caterpie can't cut it! Neither can Weedle. Why didn't you give Beetle that mention? Shh, you'll scare the bugs away. Alright, so we're gonna put Chirp back up to the front. Getting some good levels as we go. I believe if you battle trainers, you get more experience points than you do from wild Pokemon. The only downside is trainers, of course, are expendable. Like, uh, what would you say? They're not not, not a renewable resource. Once you've or battled them once, there's no way to battle them again. Yo, you can't jam out of your Pokemon trainer. Ooh, I wasn't sure this guy was going to battle because the music hadn't changed yet, but here we go. But in this game, there isn't anything like the uh, Versus Seeker that lets you re-battle people. You just have to battle them once and they're done. So this bug catcher has three Pokemon, starting with a Weedle. Level 7. Alright, so Chirp is going to have a harder time. If only Gust was flying, we would at least have a super, super effective move. with Stab. It is still Stab, of course, but look how little that did. I'm going to bring out Shelbert. We're going to start going for some bubbles. So we do out-level this. Don't get poisoned, don't get poisoned. Didn't get poisoned. Why did I tail whip? I meant to go down to a uh, bubble. That's alright. Fortunately, they only use string shot. So they're going to lower our speed. Bubble does have the chance to lower speed, but they've already hit us with two string shots, so I don't think we're going to have speed. Critical bubble, that wasn't as impressive as I would have liked. 
And there's the poison, our first status condition of the playthrough. One more bubble should do it. Of course, we do have an antidote we can heal Shelbert up with. And land this bubble. I believe in this generation, even if a move is fully accurate, there is still a slim chance it will miss. Chirp levels up. This should be a sand attack. Yep. Now we can lower the accuracy of the opponents. Shelbert also levels up. Level 9. And Kakuna. Now this is good because it can't do anything except harden. So this is probably a good experience for Chirp. This might take a little bit of a while, but at least Chirp's going to gain some experience from this. Plus, Shelver's not going to be losing any HP from the bubble, or from the poison, as we try to take this thing down. So we see it's hardly any damage. If we do land a critical hit, though, it ignores all the defense boosts that Harden is giving Kakuna. And with all the critical hits we've gotten so far, do you think we're going to be lucky enough to get one against this thing? Probably not. So this gives us about 10 minutes just to sit and chat. How are things going, everybody? How's your day? Good? Good stuff. Right, I might actually switch out to Shelbert in a second. This is taking a little longer than anticipated. I just want to try and wait and see if I get one critical. If the odds are going to be fortunate enough for us. So it is at max hardness. No, Takuna, maximum hardness! Now watch, okay. When I'm battling against computer opponents, it seems that I only get a critical hit when the last move didn't need to be critical, and that's the one that they give me a critical for. So, let's see if that plays out here. So again, maximum hardness, their defense is as high as it's going to get. One more non-critical gust will knock it out. Critical hit. Did I call that or what? It's like the game is saying, yeah, you know what, we give you critical hits, don't feel like we never do. But they give it to you when you don't need it. So you see, speed is at 13, and the rest of the stats are pretty decent average. A Weedle. Well, we're a little bit higher level than we were before, so let's try using Chirp. Looks like another three of those will do it. No poison, fortunately. On Chirp, you can do this. You're a flying Pokemon. This is a bug. You are super effective. Except, of course, you don't have a uh, super effective attack. It would be interesting if they introduced something where if the Pokemon's type is super effective against the opponent's type, they would increase the damage from attacks as like a little bit of a buff, but apparently they haven't done that yet. It'd probably get a little complicated with like dual type Pokemon anyway. So Chirp wins the fight against Weedle on his own and gains a level to level 7, and speed goes up one more point. Everything else went up by a point I believe as well, and the bug catcher is done. Huh? I ran out of Pokemon! $70. Darn! I'm gonna catch some stronger ones! Stronger than Kakuna? Really? Okay, we have five antidotes. we we'll use one on Shelbert right now. And Squeak needs to gain up a level now to sort of keep even with the team, so... I keep switching Chirp and Squeak around Shelbert. Alright, so continuing forward through Viridian Forest. Trainer tips? Contact Professor Oak via PC to get your Pokédex evaluated. I'll be sure to do that at every town I come to. There's the antidote we just used. Awesome. Nice replacement. You can go left here as a shortcut through the grass, but I'm going to take the longer way around. And as you'll see, I believe there's a trainer up here. Apparently not. Alright. I'm just going to head down through this grass then. And continuing. We might be able to make it to Pewter City, actually. As long as we don't get attacked in this tall grass by anything. Alright, this is actually a very uneventful trip through the forest. Did I use the repel I didn't wear, or, uh, wasn't aware of? Trainer tips. No stealing of Pokemon from other trainers. Catch only wild Pokemon. Now, it's neat that they don't really have any way to enforce that, but I believe in the anime they sort of explain that when a Pokemon is captured in a Pokeball, it becomes connected to that ball, and no other ball can be used against it. Can we slip past without them seeing? No. Hey, wait up! What's the hurry? Well, I want to get to Pewter City to heal. My Pokemon are kind of weak. What's your problem? Bugcatcher wants to fight. Sends out Weedle. Level 9. Okay. Uh, I'm going to Tail Whip with Squeak. We should be able to take this Poison Sting. And we're going to switch into Chirp, actually. The two of the new recruits are going to actually team up against this thing. With the defense lowered, Gust is going to be a little more powerful. Because, as I said, it is a physical-type move in this generation. And we're not poisoned yet. That's good. And they missed the poison sting. Nice gust attack. 
Looks like maybe two more, probably three though. And Chirp and Squeak will take down this Weedle together. One more actually looks like. Come on, Chirp, you can do this, don't get poisoned. Sweet. And another dust attack. Oh, look at that one tiny pixel of HP left. Fortunately, they go for a string shot, which does nothing. And we get the knockout on level 9 Weedle. And Chirp levels up to level 8. No new moves yet, but they're coming soon enough. I give! You're good at this! 90 bucks. Thank you very much. Sometimes you can find stuff on the ground. I'm looking for the stuff I dropped. Really? Let me find it. Where is it? Where's your stuff? Now, I think it's like outside of the grass. You can find items if you push A on like an open space. Uh-oh. Pokemon battle. A Caterpie. And you know... I'm gonna catch this thing. I want another team member. So I'm gonna weaken it up a little bit. Critical hit. I think that's good. Okay, Squeak, let's get you out of there. Uh, Shelbert, you get the defenses to take the hits from this as we throw Pokeballs at it. I could also try to tackle it, but I'm not gonna risk knocking it out. I wanna add a green bug Pokemon to the team. Go, Pokeball! One, two, and three. Caterpie was caught. Team member number four. New Pokedex data is added. Caterpie, the worm Pokemon. Its short feet are tipped with suction pads that enable it to tirelessly climb slopes and walls. Want to give a nickname to Caterpie? Yes, I do. This is going to be... Critter. So Critter originally hails from Viridian Forest. Quick look at our little bug. Oops, that's chirp. That's the wrong button. Here we go. Okay, level five. So defense and speed aren't too bad. Specials, nah, not good. And just tackle and string shot until we can get to some higher levels. So if we can get out of this forest without any interruption, leaving Viridian Forest, Pewter City ahead. We're gonna head right into Pewter City. Do you notice the bushes on the roadside? The cut bushes he's talking about. They can be cut down by a special Pokemon move. Many Pokemon live only in forests and caves. You need to look everywhere to get different kinds. Just letting you know there are different regions, different aspects of, uh, like you can go through water and stuff like that to encounter every different Pokemon that is in your version of the game. Trainer tips. Any Pokemon that takes part in battle, however short, earns EXP. And right here we're going to head into the Pokemon Center, and as Nurse Joy heals us up, we are going to end off this particular episode. Now, what I'm probably going to do is at least two episodes a week, because I'm having fun playing this and recreating the team I originally had. So I'm going to have another episode of this up tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. And I'm just going to save my game quickly. And if you like this playthrough, let me know, leave a comment down below, let me know what you're looking forward to in this, and just basically what you think of the team thus far as I've assembled. With that, we're going to end off this episode. Thank you, everybody, for checking out our Pokemon Blue playthrough, episode 2, and I'll catch you next time.